Ahoy! Captain Benzie here, coming at you with an Armorjet Loadout Lowdown in association with Fiery Tail. This series aims to take a close look at every weapon in the Armorjet Armory in order to better inform you bounty hunters how to dominate in the arena with them. Today we are going to be looking at one of the more unusual weapons in the Armorjet Arsenal, the Venom. This weird weapon is a radioactive goo launcher. The projectiles that it fires break into smaller globules on impact and stick to surfaces, dealing damage on contact. Now, unlike more direct damage dealers where you aim in the approximate direction of your opponent and pull the trigger, the Venom is more of a support weapon. Specifically, I like to refer to it as a zoning weapon. Now, I'm borrowing this term from fighting games and MOBAs, but for those of you unfamiliar with the terminology I'm borrowing, this essentially refers to the ability to influence your opponent's movement. The Venom isn't necessarily about racking up your personal kill count, though it most certainly can do this. It's about denying the opposing team access to certain paths or entire areas of the arena. Before we cover this more advanced level of use, let's go over the basics of the Venom and how to use it outside of team environments. Now like the badger, the Venom fires in an arc. It's also a burst fire weapon that launches a handful of globules with each trigger pull. As previously mentioned, these globules break apart when they impact into terrain and they bounce. This means that like the Tremor, it's often better to aim not directly at your opponent, but at the ground by their feet or the wall or ceiling behind or above them. In fact, these bounces travel surprisingly far, and with the curvature of the weapon's trajectory, you can actually rain toxic goo into your opponents whilst remaining out of their line of sight completely. A particularly cunning Venom user will also very quickly work out how to bounce these shots to hit targets in a frightening radius around them. For example, standing here, near the invisibility power-up on Magma, a Venom user can hit opponents anywhere in this area including directly below them. Now, no other weapon in the game can do this, and this advanced knowledge of the maps is absolutely vital to vanquishing with the Venom. Roll credits. Seriously though, learn the environments. Learn how your shots bounce from different surfaces at different angles. Get a feel for how this aspect of the Venom works, and you'll be able to rinse the opposition from relative safety. Add to this that the Venom has a decent rate of fire, a fairly short reload time, and great mobility, and the Venom can easily become very toxic to deal with. Pun wholeheartedly intended. That said, however, dealing with a Venom user is actually surprisingly obvious when you stop and think about it. Firstly, the Venom's horizontal and positive vertical range is astonishingly short. If you approach a Venom user side on, like or from above, think like 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock on a clock. It can be very difficult for them to deal with, especially if you keep to open spaces to deny the Venom user a surface to bounce the goop off. You can easily swoop in and cut them to ribbons with a Black Tusk, a Dominion, Thunderstorm, you name it. Any quick-firing close-range weapon will do. Secondly, due to the Venom's short range, they are nigh on helpless against opponents carrying long-range weaponry, like a Long Claw, Havoc, Leviathan, or Velocitus. Even a Locust can be problematic for a Venom user. Keep out of their range and take the Venom user out. Now, before we cover the topic of secondary weapons, let's go back to that advanced Venom usage in team play. So far, we've looked at running the Venom while queuing solo against random enemies and how to rack up your kills. And whilst you can just use a Venom like this in team play, you'd be missing a huge amount of the weapon's utility. Simply put, by soaking an area in a near constant barrage of Venom goop, you can zone the enemy team away from certain areas or into others. Most obviously, by covering the double damage in a deluge, for example, you can deter the enemy team from approaching whilst your teammates swoop in and grab it. Less obviously, but arguably just as powerful, if not more so, is denying certain channels on the map. If, uh, if one approach route is being splattered in radioactive goop, then the enemy team must approach from other angles. If you make sure that these angles are well covered with, say, a Black Tusk and Leviathan user, you've created a kill corridor. Use this to keep your opponents cornered away from the power-ups or held at a distance to protect your long ranges. 
Now on the subject of teamwork, Venom users don't really require any of the power-ups specifically. Your frontliners will get more use of the shield pickups, and although a Venom with double damage can be absolutely disgusting, your teammates will likely take priority, unless they're using something like a Phantom, Locust, or Quantum that doesn't overly benefit. Now your choice of secondary weapons ultimately comes down to your intent for the Venom. Now I know some like to carry a Marauder or an Enforcer to quickly dispatch enemies that get a little too close as a way of providing return firepower against snipers or just dealing with anything within that 9 till 3 o'clock uh, uh, circle. Frag grenades are also a great option for some extra damage if you're looking to use the Venom in solo players. You can quickly lob a grenade at an enemy that's managed to avoid the majority of your goop and is swooping towards you, and you can do so from whatever safe point you're holding. Proximity mines are a great option for a zoning support gunner, as these allow you to further deter opponents from using certain approaches. But my firm favourite <laughs> remains the incendiary grenade, as this can blanket an entire stretch of the floor in fire. If the goop doesn't get them, the fire does. I use this both in solo and in team play. Now for ultimates, there are a few that I would recommend. Sentries are a great option, both for zone denial, if you can drop them in a decent enough position, but I like to keep one close just to deter any frontliner getting too close to my safe space. I'd strongly recommend the machine gun sentry if this is the route you want to go down, as anyone who happens to step into your approximate direction is going to get rinsed in lead. Drones are a fantastic option for going hunting without you leaving the safety of your dug in and are probably the best ultimate for solo play if you're trying to rack up the kills. Again though, my personal favourite by far is the Napalm Strike. This with the Venom and the Incendiary Grenade makes for an absolutely deadly combination that will have your opposition screaming into their screens. You turn the entire arena into a very, little and a very literal and hilarious game of The Floor is Lava. Just be aware you are going to be on the receiving end of a lot of salt if you go for this. You know what though, that said, I like to personally treat that as a sign that it's working as intended. Yes, I'm evil. There's a reason that Venom mains are considered absolutely toxic in every sense of the word, and that's because we feed on the salty tears of our opposition. <laughs> Well, that just about wraps it up for this particular Armorjet loadout lowdown. I do hope I've inspired you to try being a toxic Venom user for a bit, and for the rest of you, I hope you've at least learned the best way to counter this playstyle so that you don't turn into a pillar of salt every time you encounter one of us. If you found this video informative, funny, or at least somewhat enjoyable, please slap that like button like you're trying to pop a sticky grenade into someone's face. Subscribe and ring that bell for more Armorjet content, and then come join us in the Gaming Galleon Discord. Details on screen now to chat about Armorjet and about a bajillion other games too. Finally, I do have a Patreon if you want to, ab uh, want to be absolutely legendary and support this channel. Happy sailing, and I'll see you all in the arena.